Clinton, uh, four and thirteen, nine seven and one a year ago. Currently mired one and five. Where's the outlier? That would, of course, would be last year at nine seven and one. And that's not a diss. That's just the reality of the situation. And even when the Giants went nine seven and one and had a really really good, uh, actually, actually a great win to be fair, a road playoff win. They, they, to me, it was uh, all right. I mean, it didn't really feel like a team that was moving in the right direction legitimately in terms of their talent base. We thought they were well coached, but we didn't really think they had a ton of, of weapons. Like, they overachieved a little bit here. Here's the situation that the Giants are faced with. And I know that, Sal, you've, you've said if they beat the Commanders and if they beat the Jets and you think they could win both, I don't. Uh, and if you're right, I still would not subscribe to what you subscribe to, like a playoff push. The Giants need to find their next quarterback, and they need to do that now. I think a lot of people are sadly overlooking, because I like Jones, overlooking. It's the second time in three years he's had a neck injury, a neck issue, right? Second time in three years. You know, even if he was healthy, we don't really fully believe in Daniel Jones. Many of us don't. Tyrod Taylor's got a two-year deal, which expires after this season, and he's in his mid-30s. So, to me, every resource should be put into the Giants finding their quarterback starting next season. Yeah. Like, they got to understand where they are. That's nowhere near winning. So, you're done with Jones? I'm done with Jones for the Giants' trajectory. Yeah, yeah I am. I, I can't. I am. I'm not there With all due yet. respect. I know. I get it. And I know you haven't, you know, totally dismissed him. Although, right now, you're saying you're ready to move on. I'm not there yet. I still believe, and call me crazy, I still believe, and who knows what's going to happen this week. I know he's, you know, no contact at practice, and, you know, maybe it's unlikely he plays Sunday. Who knows? Need to see him Sunday. But I do still believe that there could be something there with this combination of Dable and Jones. And I know Dable's not going anywhere. Mm -hmm. And I understand that if the Giants keep going the way that they're going, they're going to have a high pick, and maybe they could trade up and try to get a quarterback because they're still unsure of Jones. I need to see more, BT. It's in. So last year, my thought was. If I have to think about it, it means he's not the guy, yeah. right? Like if it's yeah, usually if you the don't case. No, right away. Yeah. But to your point about Zach Wilson, and we talk about some of the quarterbacks that haven't had success right away. I was thinking of another one with Jared Goff, whether it's Geno Smith, Jared Goff, and I know Goff went to a Super Bowl, a Super Bowl early on. Yeah, it was horrible early. But but he's he has turned into a terrific quarterback, dude. He's, he's a stud. And he wasn't like that right out of the gate. Obviously, otherwise the Rams wouldn't have traded him. So. There's something to be said about patience, mm -hmm. and we saw Jones have success. Like, you can't fake what he did a year ago. So, yeah, could there be higher ceilings out there potentially in the draft, whoever that may be? Would it be beneficial to have Shane and Dable pick their guy as opposed to take over a guy? I understand that. I'm not there yet giving up on Daniel Jones, a guy who I still believe even with the hideous start to his and their season, I still believe he could be a top half quarterback in this league. By the way, I like your your you know your usage or your reference about you know, if you don't know right away, you probably do know that that usually comes up a lot with like Hall of Famers with baseball. Is so and so Hall of Famer? Well, I don't know. Let me check the stats. Right. Probably not. Right. Uh, quarterback obviously is very different. You've got to have the right coaching. You know, you might not have the old line the first two three years. No weapons. You might get hurt. You might clean things up. You might get a combination of everything. All right, so let me put it this way. So, and part of my feeling is the injury. It's a neck injury. And this is now the second time in three years, of course, the last time it happened was, you know, and you respect it because he's aggressive, but he's tough. He put his pads down, put his head down, tried to get the extra yard against Dallas, and it basically ended the mm -hmm. season. All right, so if the if you don't agree with me now, and, and I get that. I understand why there would be pushback. I don't think he's playing this week. What if Daniel Jones only plays four or five games the rest of the way. Where are we at this point? The Giants finished top three, top four in the draft. There's two quarterbacks, in my opinion, worthy of, you know, top three, top four consideration. You don't draft a quarterback at that point? You have to. Yeah. I mean, look, well, at the end of the year is a different story. We're six weeks in, and Jones didn't even play last week. I, I need to see more. This was supposed to be a year where he was going to open it up, and not only – you know, do what he did last year or build on what he did last year, but take it a step further and become a guy who could actually do it through the air. Like, Daniel Jones coming into the year, I don't really think you could argue was at least a top-half quarterback. We debated 10, top 10, whatever, but minimum, bless you, minimum. Thank you. That's fair, by the way. Would, I'd say top-half. Yeah, like That's minimum, fair. you would say 15. Yeah. All right. I mean, you want to really nitpick and say 17, whatever. But, okay, so let's say we're starting there. And then this year with the weapons that they brought in, and 
with the evolution of him in this offense in year two, we were supposed to see a more downfield game to add the throwing to what was a successful running year last year. Now, not only have we not seen that, we've seen regression, which again leads us to question marks. But I just want to be patient here and at least play this thing out this year. At the end of the year, if Daniel Jones doesn't figure it out, the Giants win two football games, which, by the way, is still on the, like, very possible. They lose this Sunday. I mean, you can make the case they're not going to win many football games, if any, the rest of the way. If they finish that badly and Jones, whether he's hurt, whether he's not performing, he can't he can't do the job, then, yeah, then I think I'd start to say, okay, well, you know what? You're in this position here. Who knows we're going to be picking this high again. Get the quarterback with this new regime and make the decision once and for all to move on from Daniel Jones. But you've got to formulate the plan now, and and that's my point. And by the way, the Giants aren't going to aren't going to communicate that that to us clearly. I would almost guarantee, almost guarantee that internally they're already plotting through this. What if we finish here? What if Jones gets hurt again? What if this happens? Like you have to. That's what the smart forward people thinking, uh, forward thinking people do. And I think that the Giants, luckily for the Giants and their fans, they have two forward-thinking people, In although Shane's missed a couple of draft picks, to be fair, in Shane and Dable. So I, I look at the Giants now, and I just see an absence of talent. I'm sorry. I don't think they're very good. I don't think – not that they can't surprise a few. I'm not saying they're trash. But the way they're built, they're two most important offensive pieces. One is in a position that financially has been phased out and minimized running back. That's problem number one. Mm-hmm. And Saquon's a beast. That's not the point. It's just the, the direction of the position with the contracts. Number two, your quarterback, who we like but we don't love, is now proving to have the same injury. And he takes up a healthy percentage of your salary cap. Well, maybe that makes That's it. not good if you're not a good team. If your team winning 12, 13 games, you can mess around and say, okay, we can, we can live this way for a year or two because the justification could be a Super Bowl appearance. Giants are miles from that. Maybe that makes the decision for them. And they, they in, instead of the, well, he could do this, he has done that, we think he could be this. If it's a neck issue and he can't remain healthy or stay healthy long term or you don't think he could, then your decision is made. Then you, you have to move on from Daniel Jones. I'm just not there yet. Now all signs are pointing there. And by the way, to your point about having to make that decision now, you kind of do because the trade deadline's only a couple weeks away. That's true. Well, and yeah. that well. impacts, you know, it goes hand in hand here because if you're going to decide, hey, we're not it this year, this guy may not be it, let's get some return on some of our valuable assets now. Yep. Not that they're going to tank, but you know what I mean. I know what you mean. Do, you try to win, sure, try to be competitive, but ultimately not field a team that's going to be a, a top team. Like they're going to be picking in, you know, you would say top five, whatever it may be. And then they have better odds of getting the quarterback that you want and not restarting this thing, but taking a, a, a forward step here in the rebuild with an, a new quarterback. I mean, that's it's all on the table right now. I still believe Daniel Jones has what it takes to be a successful franchise quarterback. I've seen I've seen it happen. It happened last year. I can't make that decision yet saying Jones ain't the guy. 877-337-6666. BT and Sound on the fan. Good morning, everybody. We're inside of our Town Fair Tire studio. Friends of Town Fair remind you that you always get the guarantee lows priced on name brand tires from Connecticut to Maine. Nobody beats Town Fair Tire. Nobody. I think I'm coming down with something, so if the voice sounds a little really? scratchy. Yeah. Oh, stay the hell away. Sneezing. I'm trying. Where's your mask, bro? Yo, stop. <laughs> I ain't wearing a mask. I'll, 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 listen, I'll die before I start throwing that stupid-ass mask on again. Vinny's in Smithtown, New York. Vinny, what's going on, bud? How are you? What's going on, guys? How you doing? Hey, Vin. Vin? Look, I just got to say, how if you look at Dan Jones on paper, how could you confidently say he's the guy? Well, forget Jones. about on paper. Just look at him on, on, on the field. The paper thing makes no All right. sense. Uh, you watch him on the field, and he makes me depressed, miserable. You look at his movements. He's, he's just, he can't be the guy. Dan Jones is the fifth highest quarterback in the NFL. He's 22 and 36 in his career. That is not alarming. You, how could the guy possibly be this bad over the course of five years? His QBR has never been over 62. And any season, the first three seasons, it never left 55. Yeah, I mean, look, there there are circumstances. You cut out a little bit there, Vinny. Go ahead, Sal. There are circumstances to that. I mean, yep. do we need to go over the different coaches and offensive systems that he's been in uh, since he's been here, has been drafted? Do we need to go over the offensive line or the lack of weapons? And I'm not trying to make excuses because 
I felt this way, BT, that you do about Daniel Jones, maybe even stronger against Daniel Jones, prior to and during last season. And then I saw it happen in the NFL, in real life. Daniel Jones went out there and pretty much single-handedly, and it was Barkley as well, but with a very limited team as far as talent goes around him. I mean, very limited. They, they basically had nothing. Him and Barkley carried this team to the postseason against all odds and then won a postseason game. So those are things that happen. And I've seen him in spurts or at times throw the football effectively, whether it's his rookie season, whether it is a second half against Arizona, whether it's times last year when he needed to make a play. Like, we've seen it. It's not, And I've seen a net quarterback play, whether it's this town or just in the NFL, and he's not that. I, there, there's something there. Injury aside, forget that for a second, he he has the tools. He's got the size. I like his leadership ability. Mm-hmm. Even the calm demeanor. I know some people don't like that. So if you do watch him, even the biggest doubters like myself, he proved us wrong a year ago. I can't give up on that just six games in. How about uh, Chris in Hackens, Hackettstown, New Jersey? Chris is on the fan with BT and Sal. What's up, Chris? Hey, what's going on, buddy? Hey, man. What's up, Chris? So, last year, he was your partner, and I hear you saying to him week after week, damn, I wish Daniel Jones was a Jets quarterback. You got your quarterback. You got your quarterback. You fell in love with the guy. So did I. So, after five games in this offensive line, I need you to tell me your only point is his neck injury and nothing to do with his play. No. No, it's 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 listen. It's largely derived from having now the same injury two out of three years at a at a part of at a, at a part of the body that is almost unavoidable. To you, 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 how do you protect the neck playing football if you already have an injury? Number one. Now I don't know if I love Jones. You're going back to some of the conversations with me and T Cat, and we were all over it last year. I never loved him, but I always liked him. And this is the odd part. I admit here, Chris of of my position with Daniel Jones. I never abandoned Daniel Jones at his lowest moment, but I was never fully punctuating his arrival at his highest moment, you know? So I could probably frame this, <clears throat> excuse me, a couple different ways. Like, all right, his all-time record is not good. He's 1-12 in primetime. He's injury prone. But then there's the flip side, and there's some good stuff. But where the roster is, by the time... That big money kicks in after these two years of the contract. It's not going to be worth it, in my opinion. No, I mean, honestly, all fair points. And I'm at a point in my season with him where I'm defending him left and right. But I just, I've seen it on the field. And I don't think I'm being a fanatic fan. I've seen him make the plays with his legs, with his arms, with his accuracy, with his brain. The Giants need to get him an O-line. And at one point, him and Saquon needed to stay healthy together. I'll go with that to my grave. I don't know if I'll win the battle, but thanks for well, the I got well, you. We're, no, we're going to get to see it, Chris. I mean, thanks, they're bud. not – they, the Giants, are not giving up on him at, at, at the very least through the rest of this year. So if he could get back healthy, well, let's hope this Sunday, with Barkley being back, maybe the offensive line starts to get a little healthier – I mean, at some point, we got to see it. And it also can't be year five. Okay, well, this is going to be the year. And that was part of my argument last year. Like, every year, the excuses were built in. Well, he didn't have the offensive line. Well, it's a new head coach. Well, this. Well, that. Like, at some point, you got to make a freaking decision. And yet, here we are again, still deciding if he's the guy or not. Mm. Which is why I say that. Isn't that the answer then? Well, I thought so, yes, last year. But I'm not so certain. You know, there's a good chance you get somebody that's not as good as Daniel Jones or can't do the things that he's already accomplished. Again, I... But he's not making $40 million at that point. Well, that's a different argument. But that's a big part of the argument that I've already baked in. So off of that, last year, even with the year that he had, I did not think that he was worth that money. And I would have played poker and said, okay, go... What's your... Market value. Go like, see what you got out there. Yeah, I yeah. mean, who the bleep is paying? I almost slipped right there. Oof. You and I become so conversational that one of these days it's going to fly. I, I mean, I've yeah. come close already. Me too. But the the testing the market for Jones, like who in their right mind uh-huh. outside of this situation where the owners loved him, he had a good year with Dable, you think anybody in the league would have paid Daniel Jones forty million dollars? I think the Jets might have a year ago if they oh couldn't get. Ro- I mean, if they couldn't get Rodgers, what a they might have. To imagine what a mistake that would have been. Because I also think Jones 
was a better fit here. Like, if he were worth $40 million to anybody, yeah. it would have been I don't know the about Giants that. with Dable. I, again, I don't even want to really get the Jets into this, but just as his, his, his value outside of the Giants organization, just to explore that for a moment, like, see, Daniel Jones, when he's behind multiple touchdowns, is useless because at that point, the run is pretty much – on, on ice, and he's going to have to sling it. And him throwing the football, he's average. You know, he's, he's okay. Him with the run, with the pass, with the other stuff, or or the threat of both, that's where he elevates his game. With the Jets' defense, I know, I he get wouldn't that. have had to do too much. Right, but I'm talking about offensively. Like, we've seen Jones with how many different head coaches, right? Three different head coaches now? Yeah, yeah, the one, two, yeah three. Okay, and only one of them was able to get the most out of him consistently. I know Shermer... Did some good things with him throwing the football, but he was turnover machine and rookie year. Didn't really get a chance to play it out. I feel like Jones was a product of Dable specifically. So how would Jones, yes, if he did what he did last year with Dable with the Jets, makes them a very good team. Certainly better than what we're seeing right now. But I'm not so sure he would have been the same player without Brian Dable. 877-337-6666. BT and Sal. Wilson's in Roxbury, New Jersey. What up, Wilson? What's up, BT? But before I get to my point, I want to say shout out to my brother in law, George. You man, huge Jack Jets fan like you. He agrees with you on everything. Uh, he's he's right? a, he's a, he's too. a yeah. smart man. He's a smart man, that brother in law. Very nice. <laughs> America's hey, team, hey, the Jets. Hey, 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 guys. Hey, Sal. Hey, listen, you guys. Let me tell you something. You know, last year, I can count the quarterbacks on, my, on one hand. How many, how many quarterbacks can actually win nine games last year? Daniel Jones won nine games. With nothing, so you got to give him, you got to give him some credit for that, BT. I, I, I hey, by the way, Wilson, I have, uh, and I was very happy to do it because I really like Daniel Jones. But giving credit for past accomplishments and then no. trying to deduce what what the future holds, two very different things. Okay, but listen, let me let me let me get to my next one real quick. Listen, not for nothing, man. But, uh, if you put. Daniel Jones, I think, got hurt in uh, deep, uh, game five, right? Listen, half of the quarterbacks would have been in the emergency room by game five. He's tough. I he mean, is a tough he's SOB, tough. dude. Uh, so, so, listen, so no quarterback can function the way the, the way the Giants were. I mean, Patrick, everybody wants Patrick Mahomes. You can't have Patrick Mahomes. But, uh, uh, you know, you got to give him a little break because, uh, if, you know, no, 90% of the quarterbacks in the league, Will not be able to function. Listen, Wilson, here, you know, I, I I got you. I got you. Here's the bottom line. This is admittedly a callous and cold and emotionless evaluation of the Giants' future. Because if I incorporate the emotions, I'm gonna have Jones's back. Hey, because look, I like him. You gotta make a decision. Like like it's it can't just be every year. Oh, is it is he good? Is he not? Is he like at some point you gotta make the decision. I'm not there yet. And if I had to make the decision, I'm sticking with him. I think he's going to be the best option in the short term and potentially long term. Yep. You're not. I mean, that's the difference right now. But at some point, they got to make that decision one it's, way or it's another. It's a massive difference. Exactly what I'm saying is if the Giants finish where I think they will in the draft, they need to take a quarterback. 877-337-6666. Back. 